what comes next in a place like Egypt? Okay, so he's gone. Yeah. N but they still have a strong military rule right. and a military that has a lot of interests in yeah. keeping some level of rule. Right. What do you think comes next in a place like that? And you know, all the Arab countries are actually different. You have everything from tin pot dictatorships to constitutional monarchies in the region. So it's not like 1989 in Eastern Europe where they all fall like dominoes at the same time and you have parliamentary democracies coming up that gradually join the European Union. It's not going to be that easy in the Arab world. In Egypt, for example, your best case scenario is that it takes you a decade or more to get the Egyptian military out of the economy and so forth. So it's going to be slow. Uh, Tunisia will also take a long time. Each of them. E Libya won't even have a government that is recognizable once Gaddafi is gone. The difference here is that a lot of the future in the Arab world in these countries is, is going to depend on what the people want and how they play it out. Now, the people also means the different institutions in the country, like the military. The military is a very important part of society actually. It's a big employer. For example, the Egyptian government was the largest employer in the whole country and still is. So you can't really even say government versus people versus military. They all are actually intertwined in a, in a complicated way. But look, what's happening in the region is first and foremost an Arab issue. Then second order, it's actually a European issue. And then the third most prominent set of actors should be you know, North America, United States. And I think that's the way Americans should also understand to look at it, that they're not going to call the shots here. What's Obama's new role or new path here uh, in, 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 this, in this setup? Well, he's the first president to come in accepting that the world is multipolar. There are other great powers. America is not always going to get its way. You have to cooperate with others. There has to be burden sharing and a division of labor. This is all stuff that George Bush would not have said, right? But he comes in. He actually believes this. He actually understands it. He's young, obviously. So I think Obama gets it. But look, he's inherited a very difficult situation, weak fiscal position, and obviously wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So it's going to take a long time for him to just turn around America standing in the world, let alone start to have a positive impact in places where America has done a lot of damage. So it's going to be an uphill climb, and the rest of the world should not be waiting for America to step in and take the lead. It should be doing whatever it has the capacity to do. How much of this is directly or to a degree indirectly affected by people's relationship with Israel and the Palestinians and the Middle East. Because proper right. diplomacy uh, hasn't worked. Right. For, I, I, you know, there's clearly a state of Israel, and that exists. Yeah. Uh, but the instability in the region is pretty yeah. profound. So how does all this play well, in? Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, first of all, there have been 30 years of Rose Garden diplomacy at the White House saying, let's sign peace agreements and move in that direction. And it hasn't happened because there also hasn't been a peace among the people, so to speak. There hasn't been that, that P to P diplomacy, as I call it. We've only had G to G, right? Government to government. We haven't had P to P. We need to have that as well. But secondly, I think this is obviously a shock to the United States and to Israel, realizing that people power is really prominent and that it's going to call into question just taking for granted stability that is based on really no achievement of peace whatsoever. And so there's a lot of anger that's going to be publicly surfaced. And the U.S. isn't going to be able to suppress it because the Egyptian military is not going to dictate what the Egyptian foreign policy is going to be anymore. And so Israel has to get ready for that. The United States has to get ready for that. This is one reason why I say you want to be friends with all sides. What do they have to get um, ready for? Uh, they have to get ready for a situation where Arab countries are going to start to get a lot tougher. They're going to say we're going to you know, uh, not trade at all with Israel. We may even cancel the previous peace agreements, whatever it is. Or we're going to support the Palestinian um, authority to unilaterally declare independence. Things like this might, might start to happen.